Hey, what's up all you art geeks out there? Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about using a restrictive palette of colors. In this painting that you're watching today, this one is all about using just four colors. I'm using manganese violet, I'm using Naples yellow, titanium white, and a little bit of burnt umber, but not very much. And the reason I'm using these four colors is because the company Blocks reached out to me and asked me to use their colors uh, for this portrait to uh, do a quick reel on Instagram. And I said, sure, I could do that. I can make a reel for you. They sent out these colors. They asked me to use manganese violet and Naples yellow as the primary colors. And I thought, sure, no problem. Those should work well together. And that's what you're gonna be watching today. Now, if you wanna see the full version of this portrait painting process, go over to my Patreon account where I have a bunch of tutorials. This particular video is not exactly a tutorial. It's just a demonstration, but you can watch that to see the whole process unfold. And there's also art downloads that I upload every every month for you to download, print out, put on your wall, whatever you wanna do with those as well. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the subject at hand using a restrictive palette of oil paints. There's a lot of different ways to go about painting. You can have 10, 11, 12, 20 colors on your palette. You could have just three colors. You could have two colors, probably just black and white and have a really nice painting. I'd say the most restrictive way to paint would be a very light color and a very dark color so that you have some contrast, but you keep it simple by just using those two. Now for this painting, I'm using four. There's a lot of different ways to do it. You can pick out a lot of different colors, but I felt like these four colors I'm using were perfect to create this portrait uh, for the company blocks. Now I did ask ChatGPT, what are the benefits of using a restrictive palette for an oil painting portrait? And they gave me six points, and we're just gonna go through these, see how they go. All right, so the first point from ChatGPT, I really like this one to start us off. Harmony and cohesion, limiting your palette to a select few colors ensures that all the hues in your painting harmonize well together. And I think the reason they're saying this is when you have a very limited palette, say you have only one darker color or only a couple dark colors and then maybe one or two light colors, it forces you to keep your color range attached to certain values. This painting, for example, I am using primarily purples in the darks. Now that keeps the harmony completely in check by keeping the hues in the purple range in the darks. Now I do veer off and put a little bit of my burnt umber or burnt sienna into that darker area just to get some variation with those purples. But as long as you don't jump all over the place within a certain value range or a certain tonal range, you're gonna be fine. Now on the other side, on the bright side, there's yellow. Now if you can imagine that I went ahead and put a bunch of reds, maybe some greens, a bunch of other colors in those lighter hues, it would not make any sense. Now that doesn't mean that you couldn't put just a touch of green or a touch of some other color into your yellow mix to make it shift hue-wise just a little bit, but you don't want to overdo it. You don't wanna have every color under the rainbow within each of your tonal ranges. So with this painting, I know that I wanna keep my yellows on the brighter side, I wanna keep my purples on the darker side of the value range, and by doing that, you're guaranteed to harmonize. Now, the more complex you get with the palette colors you choose, the more you need to make sure that you have it all under control. And this is something that really goes down to the foundational things you need to understand about color mixing and color harmony is that Usually less is more. Now there is always ways to push your color harmonies to throw a lot of different colors in, but there's a lot of different rules that are associated with that. So if you're gonna have a bunch of different colors, usually you don't wanna have all those colors right on top of each other. You maybe wanna shift to some different colors on different parts of your overall composition. There's just a lot of things at play. So as you get better with color, you'll be able to add more and more colors and make it balanced. But if you're just getting started with oil painting, if you're just getting started with color in general, make sure that you keep it simple Decide on what colors you wanna have for the light tones, the mid tones, and the darker tones, and you'll have a lot more success, and you can build on top of that later on. Don't feel like you need to jump into a bunch of color right off the bat, because you'll end up getting frustrated because the paintings won't make a lot of sense, there won't be a lot of color harmony, and you maybe won't understand why. Okay, number two on the list is focus on value and temperature. With fewer colors to work with, you're forced to pay more attention to values and temperature. This makes a lot of sense. Personally for me, when I made the switch from just drawing with pencils to painting, 
I didn't know what to do with color. So my first painting was just an abstract painting with a lot of different slight blues in it. I kept it very simple and I ended up with a fairly successful first painting. Now the second I put it way too many colors on my palette and tried to make something more complicated, it was a complete failure. So slowly add more colors to your portrait. I think the best place to start if you're switching from drawing with a pencil and going over to color is to maybe get four colors. You could go with a darker color like burnt sienna, maybe throw a blue on your palette, then a yellow, and then a white. That way you're keeping it very simple. There's a lot of different variations you could add there. You could throw a red on your palette as well, but the burnt sienna can kind of act as that red for a little bit. But if you keep the palette simple to say four colors or even two colors, just black and white, that may help you get a handle with just the painting and the value and how a value is created with paint. Now another thing to consider when you have less paints on your palette is you'll get a better handle of the nuance of those colors. So I really enjoy just focusing on a few colors on my palette and giving myself a chance to become an expert with just those colors. And what you can do is start with four, then add five, get yourself up to 10 or 11, and that's where I'm at. I use about 10 or 11 colors for every painting. It doesn't mean I'm gonna use every color, but they're all on my palette just in case I want to use them. But I know how to use them all and when they should be used. So slowly build up, add more colors as you go, but make sure that you're not losing attention to the things that matter like value, color temperature, and just the slight nuances of mixing just a handful of colors together on your palette. All right, number three, I kind of touched on this one already, but it's greater color mixing mastery. If you just have four colors, if you have the three primary colors, blue, red, yellow, and white, and you can do this in different variations. Your red could just be a burnt sienna, your blue could be an ultramarine blue, your red could be cadmium red, and then a titanium white just to really help brighten things up. If you can master those four colors, if you start with those four, do 10, 20 portrait paintings, you're gonna come out the other side having a mastery of those colors. It may take a few more paintings than 20, but once you get locked in on those four colors, you'll feel confident to start adding more and more colors. Now, most impressionist painters like myself that have an impressionist palette, they have 10 to 12 colors or so. I have 11 when I first start out. Sometimes it's just 10, but that's about all I need. I know I can reach about any color I need with those 10, 11 colors, but start small. Start with four colors. That's a good place to start. There's a lot of different color palettes out there that you can look up and find that will uh, give you a good starting point for what those four colors could be, but master those four. You'll become an expert, and then you can start expanding to different things after that. Okay, now number four is simplicity and clarity. And this is something I totally agree with. When you start adding too much color, you start to forget all the things that are really important off the bat. Now, when I start a new painting, I like to keep my colors very desaturated, very earthy. I like to do a grisaille style underpainting to get things figured out, get the drawing in place, do the block in. So that's all I'm really thinking about is drawing, block in, composition, and then I start thinking about color composition later. By building up color as you go, it gives you a chance to get some very important drawing things out of the way before you shift gears and start thinking about color. Now, if you're really new to the painting process, again, that's why a limited palette can be so useful because you can start to get a feel for the paint itself. There's a lot of things outside of worrying about color that you need to lock in on before you start getting into color mixing. And something you might find out, especially right off the bat, is if you try to do a lot of color with a portrait and then you do one after that that's a lot more simplified, where the colors are a little bit more straightforward, I bet there's a good chance you're going to find out that the painting with a much simpler set of colors is going to be more successful and more attractive than the painting where you try to throw a lot of interesting color ideas at it. When you keep it simple, you can really focus on things like how does the oil feel under your brush? You can start trying out a bunch of different brushes, flats, filberts, brights. There are so many different brushes to try. Then you can get into mediums and start seeing which mediums you enjoy using. Then you can decide if you want to have thin paint or thicker paint, if you want to use palette knives. There's a lot of things outside of color 
that can really be fine-tuned before you start throwing in a bunch of different color ideas into a painting. I think also by keeping it simple, you're gonna get less frustrated. You'll end up having some good, successful paintings that maybe don't have every color, but they're gonna look visually appealing. Because on the other side, if you decide, oh, I'm just gonna try every single color known to man on this painting, I can guarantee it's gonna be a muddy mess, you're not gonna like it, and it may deter you from wanting to continue painting. Okay, so five is sounding like a repeat of number one, or part of number one anyway. Enhanced color harmony, we already kind of talked about this, but I guess to touch on it again, if you have just a handful of colors, color harmony is gonna be easier. It's so much simpler to organize your palette, so much simpler to pick your dark tones, mid tones, light tones. If you just have a handful of colors, it's just natural. You can always use to say like a yellow for your bright colors, a red for the mid tones, a blue for your dark tones. Pretty straightforward, fairly easy. I see a lot of painters that do this that like to have, like say the blues be the dark color, the reds be the mid-tones, and some yellows be the lighter tones because they naturally, right out of the tube, are in those value ranges. But then once you get past that, once you want to start playing with more subtle colors, you can find ways to add a little bit of those three or four colors into each other and start having much more earthy colors with those. And that's when you really start to understand color mixing is when you start mixing reds, blues, and yellows, those three primaries together to find subtle browns, to find subtle greens, to find all those really grayish brown colors that you might find in nature. So that is a great point by Chav GPT, even if it was a repeat. All right, now number six, really digging this one. This is a good one. Challenges, creativity. This one applies to so many things in the creative realm. When you think about how having a restrictive palette can apply to pushing your creativity, I think about how you can find so many interesting subtle color changes and subtle ways to use, say, three or four colors. This goes back to even drawing. I remember just having one basic number two pencil when I was growing up and how much I could push that one pencil to its limits to make a portrait, to make uh, landscapes, anything I could think of to draw. That's all we really had to start with when we were kids was just a number two pencil or a mechanical pencil and then we just see what we could do with that. The same applies with portrait painting or with painting in general. If you just have a few colors, if, even if it's just black and white, you'll start to figure out what you can do with just black and white. Then you can add the primary colors. Give yourself four colors, the blue, yellow, red, and white, and find out what you can do with those colors. I've seen plenty of artists out there where that's the only only colors that they use and they create some amazing masterpieces where you wouldn't even know it that there's just four colors in their palette and I think people enjoy that I think people enjoy seeing what they can do with a very limited resource like the colors on their palette sometimes it's as simple as just having one paintbrush and seeing what you can do with that one paintbrush or one palette knife or no medium whatsoever, just going straight out of the tube with no medium to make your paints a different consistency. So there's a lot of ways you can challenge your creativity by limiting your palette and many other things actually as well. So uh, that was all six points. I think Chat GPT did a pretty good job with these points. Number five was a repeat of number one, in my opinion. But as far as the points that ChatGPT gave me to talk about, I think we had a good discussion once again. So if you have any questions or have any other interesting ideas about how a limited palette has helped you out or how maybe you have some experience with using too many colors and how it really deterred you from wanting to keep oil painting, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Again, if you want to learn more about my painting process, go over to my Patreon account where you can learn all kinds of things about oil painting painting, portrait painting, blocking in your portraits, a lot of other tutorials as well. If you like what you heard today, please like, subscribe, all of that junk like usual. Thank you so much for checking out another one of my videos, all you art nerds out there. I will talk to you again very soon.